back. Dr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank Morning, you, sir. Secretary, Good to for see being you. here. Um, I, I'm going to start by just bringing over some facts that today, 20 percent of Latinos uh, have less, uh, have greater than $10,000 in retirement, and 29 percent of Americans, according to GAO, have nothing for retirement. Some studies show as much as 50 percent of people have no retirement savings. So I think, and, and 75 percent of all African Americans are in the bottom quartile of retirement. And I don't believe that your rulemaking that you're doing on fiduciary and other things, I don't think your intention is to decrease financial advice that low-income investors get. I don't believe that. I don't think you believe that. But there are some facts out there that we cannot ignore now. And for many years, you've stated that your goal was promoting the Department's fiduciary rulemaking was to ensure that all retirement advisors act in the best interest of savers when giving investment advice. And dating back to our first hearing in July of 2011, I publicly agreed with that goal. Today, I still agree with it. In fact, Republicans and Democrats have long agreed we need to look at ways to strengthen protections for those saving for retirement. That's why I'm disappointed that the Department publicly opposed the bipartisan legislation, Affordable Retirement Advice and Protection Act, and its companion, the Savers Act. This legislation would make the stated goal of best interest standards a reality without prohibiting advice, uh, the so-called best interest contract exemption. The DOL uh, proposal will make it harder for working families to save and plan for retirement. We have no indication that the final rule will be any different. That's why Congress should act in a bipartisan way. And let me just give you a couple of things. The Washington Post just said, I think it was yesterday in an editorial, Supporting the fiduciary rule is having more pluses than minuses. I think they would definitely support my bill. Uh, that the that the uh, the exemption is unworkable. The investment industry's strongest point that a proposed exemption the administration offered to placate opponents is so vague and unworkable that few, if any, companies would take advantage of it. And a study just published from the UK, I think this week said, we believe, and this is in the U.K., that the new regulation they passed in 2013 has brought about positive step changes in the quality of advice available to those with larger amounts to invest, which is what we've said all along. However, steps need to be taken to make the provision of advice and guidance to the mass market more cost effective. And at present, this high standard of advice is primarily accessible and affordable only to more, the more affluent in society. Would you now reconsider with this new information your opposition to our common sense legislation? Your well, uh, Mr. Uh, Congressman, uh, let me uh, say a few things. Number one, uh, you know, in our Ozzie and Harriet universe, uh, this issue was irrelevant because people worked 30 years, they had a defined benefit plan, and at the end of that 30 years, they had a pen, a party, and a pension. Today, in the world of uh, the 11 or 12 trillion dollar world of IRAs and 401ks. People are responsible for their own decisions. And as Jack Bogle, as I noted before, said, you know, when you put your customers' interests first, it's good for your customers and it's good for business. You said something that I wanted to uh, correct, which is that you indicated that there's no indication that the final rule will be different. When we withdrew our first rule, we undertook a series of meetings and listening sessions. Our first rule, for instance, had a provision pertaining to ESOPs. We heard a lot about that. We heard a lot of concerns. And as a result of that, our NPRM took that out. Uh, I've said repeatedly and publicly, our North Star is an enforceable best interest Specifically standard. the best and interest contract exemption. That's, that's, I, I, I appreciate that change in the rule. But what about the best interest contract exemption, which seems to be unworkable? Well, again, uh, our North Star is an enforceable best interest rule. We, uh, best interest standard. We heard from a number of people who said, uh, there's a more linear path to that. Our response, show us the path. And that's why we got uh, you know, 300,000, I think, comments. We read every single one of them. And I look forward at the conclusion of our process to briefing you and explaining to you, uh, here was the proposed rule, here were the comments we got, here are the changes we've made. And when we reach the end of the process, I, I commit to you that we will do that uh, with you and with anyone else who has an interest. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear the, the other, the independent uh, investment firm Morningstar recently estimated your proposal will cost $2.4 billion every year in compliance costs, which will be passed on to me, the retirement saver. Uh, moreover, the Morningstar report also said that wealth management firms would no longer serve low-income savers currently holding up to $600 billion low-balance IRAs. The big chunk of that business will go to robo-advisors, which I think is a bad idea. Before I, my time has expired, I do want to say one thing, uh, that, and this is off of the fiduciary rule, but the most productive, I was in Beijing, China two years ago with the committee, 
1.4 billion people live in China, and 1.4 billion people don't produce as many goods and services as the American worker does with 300 million people. The most productive worker in the world is the American worker, and we need to be telling our workers that more. They feel very beat down. With that, I yield back.